Ken, one of the greatest and most dominant players to ever play Super Smash Bros. Known as the King of Smash, Ken dominated the early days of competitive melee, both in singles and doubles. He was seemingly untouchable and only ever lost a handful of times over the span of years while he competed. Some even have him as the greatest of all time, but how good was he actually? Ken Huang's competitive melee history began in 2003, and he had some incredible results from the get-go. After Ken won a GameStop tournament, which was a four-player free-for-all with items on, he posted online that he was the greatest player. The best player known by the competitive Smash community was a chic main named Reciferous. Reciferous and the second best player, Matt Deasy, caught wind of this and challenged Ken to a $200 money match, thinking it was easy money. Ken accepted not knowing about the competitive scene and still beat them both. Ken asked if he was the number one player now, but they told him that he needed to win the coming biggest West Coast tournament, TG4, to be the best. Ken attended and beat Reciferous at TG4, and in his own words, tore through the whole entire tournament. Ken was seen as the best player on the West Coast after winning TG4, and no one was able to beat him. Later that same year, TG5 was coming, and there was a lot of hype for who was a better region, the West or the East Coast at Melee. The East Coast and their best player Azen came to TG5, but Ken won that without even having to play Azen, showing that their best player couldn't even make it to Grand Finals to even play Ken. Around TG5, Ken also introduced and began practicing with Isaiah, arguably the GOAT of doubles and an incredible player in his own right. Now, old school melee was a little bit different back in the day. There were more legal stages such as Corneria and Rainbow Cruise, which, what the hell? How was this shit legal back in the day? One of the biggest differences, however, was the West Coast had items on while the East Coast didn't. So Ken's TG4 and 5 wins were with items on. The East Coast debunked the West Coast wins since items had such a random element to smash and didn't showcase skill in their opinion. Slighted by this, the East Coast challenged Ken to play by their rules, which set the stage for 2004. In 2004, Ken accepted the East Coast challenge and attended Game Over. He won doubles with Isaiah without losing a game, but lost early to Chillin' Dude in his first ever bracket loss. No one had beaten him yet and one of the East Coasters did it, really igniting a fire inside of Ken. Ken then made an incredible loser's run, beating Chillin' Dude, Isaiah, and Azen twice to win it all and establish himself as the best player in the United States. Ken won most tournaments this year and when MLG picked up Melee, Ken won two out of the three events they ran. A notably bad tournament for Ken was TG6. Matt Deasy, who hosted the TG series, invited a few of Japan's top players, including Captain Jack. Captain Jack's Bowser was actually beating Ken in friendlies, and that's when Ken learned about DI. Hyperfixated on learning and improving his own DI, Ken lost before top 8 and plays 9th. TG6 was the first tournament that Ken didn't win. He went over a year playing competitive Smash without losing a single tournament. A notable fact to mention as well is that Ken and Isaiah have yet to lose a single set in doubles. An undefeated doubles team is absolutely insane. TG6 was an amazing tournament for US players to evolve, not just through playing amazing Japanese players, but also the tech they learned. While they may have unintentionally used DI in the past, they now knew what it was and how to properly utilize it, skyrocketing the ever-growing ceiling in Melee. More fired up than anything by falling short for the first time in his Melee history, Ken had an absolute incredible 2005. He did fall to his teammate Isaiah at the most three. In Ken's words, he became a super saiyan at that tournament. There's no shame in losing to someone who many people agree at the time had the highest peak in the game, who also happens to be your practice partner, someone who knows you better than anyone else. Out of the 10 tournaments that happened in 2005, Ken won 7 of them. Isaiah was the only one who outplaced Ken the entire year. Ken was able to win a majority of the MLG tournaments and even went overseas to Japan to compete in the Jack Garden tournament. Ken defeated the Rising Star Bomb Soldier who at that tournament beat a large number of Japan's best players, including the best of them, Captain Jack to claim first. Ken and Isaiah also managed to once again remain undefeated in doubles. Their team name El Chocolate Diablo struck fear into many other players. They were so clear of everyone and won everything to the point that people considered doubles to be set in stone. Isaiah and Ken would win and that's that. Ken and Isaiah were the first people to be called Gods of Smash, being referred to as such during the most three. Jack Garden is a little special because Ken had begun to get a little demoralized traveling to melee tournaments around late 2004. He was always being cheered against and only his very close friends were supporting him. Ken wasn't very happy, but accepted Captain Jack's invite to compete at Jack Garden. At this tournament, Ken revitalized his melee spirit and went on to show people why he's number one. He was blown away with the respect that the Japanese players were giving him, where in the United States, since he was easily the best player in the world, everyone always cheered against him. Without Jack Garden, Ken's story may have ended early. 2005 was an amazing year for him. Ken erased all doubts that he was the best player in the world. Ken also had the advantage of absolutely reigning over doubles with Isaiah, and Ken at this point had innovated in 
incredible amount of tech. Notable examples are dash dancing, chain grabbing, and of course, the Ken combo. He also helped develop Fox. It wasn't anything fancy or extremely game changing, but he had one of the first ever runaway foxes. Many people took aspects of Ken's fox to improve their own. He also proved himself to be very mentally resilient, able to make great losers runs, reverse 3 0s, and proved himself to adapt extremely well. A notable example was his MLG set with the Marth Slayer wife. Ken was down 2 0 and brought it all the way back at one of the biggest tournaments. In 2006, Ken was still the best player, but he faltered a little bit more compared to his previous years. He won most of the MLG tournaments that year and still was on top for doubles. New faces that could challenge the King of Smash surfaced, however, and Ken had his lowest placement since TG6. His teammate Isaiah defeated him at NorCal tournament, and the new kid on the block, PC Chris, clutched MLG New York against him. After Azen made a stellar comeback to knock Ken into losers at MLG Orlando, Ken fell to another new face being Mewtwo King. And if you want to know more about Mewtwo King, I made a full video about his godly Smash career. Ken fell to Azen and Mewtwo King again at the New York playoffs for 7th. He fell short at the most grand event in Las Vegas, the MLG National Championship, losing to many who, including himself, considered his counter, Korean DJ. He faltered in doubles a bit as well, with El Chocolate Diablo losing their first ever set to Taj and Forward. Though they still managed to win the tournament, they also failed to win their first ever tournament at MLG Chicago. Now while it might seem that Ken wasn't great in 2006, that couldn't be further from the truth. Ken was still the best player in the world. He won more tournaments than anyone else and still dominated doubles with Isaiah. He only lost two events with Isaiah and won literally everything else. While he faltered to a few new faces, that was more of a case of people getting better and reaching the highest level than it was Ken being worse. While he initially planned for 2006's MLG National Championship to be his last tournament, he wanted to go out with a bang. His eyes were set on going out as a champion. MLG had dropped Melee and there weren't many big tournaments. Evo announced it would pick up Melee for the first time and similar to MLG, there would be a lot of smaller events with the biggest tournament named Evo World being the grand finale. Ken attended three tournaments before Evo World and ended up winning two of them while placing fourth at the other. Evo World was the largest tournament in Melee history until Genesis 1 happened and Ken managed to win the whole thing. Satisfied with his career, Ken entered Super Champ Combo and placed seventh before officially retiring. Ken showed that after many people thought he was done, he was still able to compete against and beat some of the best players in the world. Players such as Mango and PC Chris, who were some of the best players around, would fall to Ken. Ken showed everyone why he's known as the king and left a spot as the uncontested best player. While it seemed like his story was finished, he actually came back. Ken's return began in 2012, although nothing too noteworthy really happened. From 2012 to 2013, Ken entered three tournaments and didn't really impress at any of them. Though a fun set was an exhibition match held between Mitsu King and Ken at EVO 2013 called the Legendary Set. Although the result wasn't favorable for Ken, in fact he got 10 0 it was still awesome to see him return. Ken's return was a little surprising, and though he was a shadow of his former self, he did have solid showings here and there. One was at Kings of Cali 3, where he placed decently and managed to defeat one of the best players in the world, Fly Almanita. Ken struggled with fast-paced matchups, but was very adept against floaties, kind of the opposite of most Marth mains, especially these days. I'm looking at you, Marth mains. Go play a puff here and there. Stop quitting against them on Unranked. 2013 was the year Melee exploded with the release of the Smash Brothers documentary. The doc had the entire history for how the competitive Melee scene came about, and many of the familiar faces in it became very popular, eventually sprouting into a lot of them getting sponsors from Team Liquid. 2014 was a very active year for Ken, but it was mostly limited to locals, with not as many majors attended. He did have a few good performances, and he was able to do well enough at majors to qualify for MLG Anaheim 2014 and placing 13th at the very stacked Kings of Cali 4. He was also able to hold an edge on the second best peach in the world, MACD. The most impressive thing he did in 2014 was taking a game off the seemingly invincible Armada at CEO 2014. Ken was one of the few people able to take a game from the god and in a best of three. Sadly, Ken's story doesn't really get any better. Better. In fact, as time passed on his performance declined and he slowly placed lower at majors every year. He did have a few highlights though, and a fun one was an exhibition salty sweet match between PC Chris and Ken. Last right, stock, last one, one. stock. Can Let's Ken see. hold on to it? Let's run back, the grab, and then there. What? Oh! What happened? 
we got to see the old school legend classic set of PC Chris and Ken duke it out for the very last time. His loss to PC Chris didn't defer him though. A big event for Ken was 13th at one of the most stacked majors in history, EVO 2015. And I'm not yelling, Ken managed to clutch a 1v1 against Armada in doubles, though they ultimately lost the set. He had also been on the reality show Survivor, I can't believe I'm saying that, and yes, this is real, Ken was on Survivor, a, the, the king of Smash, and Summit made a Survivor themed crew battle draft with Ken playing the part of the host. After these small high points in 2015 and 2016, Ken became more obscure as time passed. In 2015, he was ranked quite well, achieving number 52 rank, but he fell off a decent bit in 2016, falling 35 spots down to 87. He failed to get ranked in 2017 and attended his very last tournament in 2018, Genesis 5. He officially retired again after that, and it seems like he's done for good. Long live the king. Now how good was Ken actually? Ken was one of the absolute best to ever play the game. It took a whole year for him to take his first ever bracket loss. He was ranked number one from the year he started in 2003 to 2006, and in 2007, he still managed to obtain a number two rank. Before his retirement in 2007, out of the 38 tournaments Ken attended, he won 26 of them. That's an unreal number of events he straight up won. Ken was also a phenomenal doubles player and one of the best to ever do it, being a part of without question the most dominant team in Melee history, El Chocolate Diablo. It took three years for him to lose a single set in doubles, and they won 25 out of the 28 events they attended. Ken is one of the few people that can be considered a contender for the GOAT. He's one of, if not the absolute most dominant players to play the game, with four years being the undisputed number one player in the world. Now that's how good Ken, the King of Smash, actually was. Except, he recently lost to Zane's Puff. What the fuck? What do you guys think of Ken? Do you think his legacy can rank amongst the five gods? Or do you think the gods are clear of him? Could you rank or see him as the greatest of all time? Where do you guys personally rank Ken? Leave a comment with suggestions for the next player you want to see in a future video. Don't forget to check out the Patreon and thank you so much for watching.